touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. You're watching video of scientists at NASA celebrating after the agency's $2.5 billion probe lands on the planet Mars. I'm Deborah Kahn. You're watching Asia Today. I'm joined now by Richard Rainin, who is the manager of Curiosity's mechanical team, joining us now from Pasadena, California. Richard, congratulations. It's it's such a historical moment. What was it like the moment that Curiosity landed on the moon? I'm oh, sorry, on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was unbelievably fantastic. I've, uh, I've spent eight years of my life working towards that moment and, and to hear confirmation that we're finally on the surface, un, apparently undamaged and ready to go to work. Is It, it makes it all worthwhile. Okay, and you actually designed um, part of the rover. Tell us, what will it be doing while it's on um, the planet, and how long do you expect um, the entire robotic expedition to go on for? Uh, well, the, the robotic mission is designed to go on for two Earth years. Um, it, it, it could go on much longer than that if, uh, you know, if, if luck is with us. and. Um, you know, we've got a fuel source in that uh, radioisotope thermoelectric generator that, that will last for quite some time. So uh, there's a good possibility that the rover will last for, for some time beyond the two years planned for the, for the main mission. Uh, we, you know, we're designing, we're still, we're still working, uh, working with the rover. We've got a test vehicle out here that we're doing testing on, continue to do testing on. Uh, and we'll be doing tests to support the operations team uh, as they find interesting things to, to go and investigate and to drill. We have a test set up here at the lab where we're going to be doing uh, similar tests to what, what's going to happen on the surface of Mars, hopefully. Okay, and so Richard, why should we be interested here on Earth? Why should we be interested in what's going on in Mars? Well, oh, this is exploration of a, of a new world. It's a, it's a planet that we've just barely scratched the surface on. Um, you know, we've sent a couple of probes there, but this is a large planet, and, and we've only seen a fraction of it uh, from the surface. So this is really, really exciting. This particular location that we've landed in is going to give the geologists a, a roadmap through time for, uh, for Mars, and it's going to tell us, so much that we don't know about the planet there, and it could very well give us some indication of whether it was habitable for life at some point in its, in its past. Uh, we've got the most sensitive scientific equipment that we've ever sent to the surface of Mars. That's why our vehicle is so big this time. Uh, we've got an analytical chem lab that we've never sent to the surface of a planet before um, that's designed to look for carbon-containing compounds, and, and if we found something like that, it would just be fantastic news. Okay, and now that Curiosity has landed, is that the most difficult part of this mission, or is it actually more difficult to get the information back to Earth? There is no easy part of this mission from beginning to end. Uh, each, each has its own complexities. EDL certainly um, was the most terrifying because we have about seven or eight minutes there while the, the, the vehicle is basically under its own control and we can't do anything about it. Um, and it's, it's extremely challenging to get to the surface and I'm sure people have probably seen a lot of the videos and things that explain that in a lot of detail. Um, once we're on the surface, it then becomes a scientific tool and um, it's a mobile platform. The scientists tell us where they want to go, what looks interesting to them and the vehicle then drives over and does the scientific work for them. So um, it, it, it is challenging. There are a number of different challenges uh, on the surface. Uh, we're now dealing with a very unpredictable situation. We're drilling rocks on the surface of another planet. We're trying to extract powder out of these rocks, which is something we've never done before, and transfer that powder into these analytical instruments. And, and it's just very, very unpredictable. We're going to learn a lot as we as we go through it and do it for the first time. And what does this all mean for actually eventually, hopefully, getting a man on Mars? Oh, I I would love to see us 
uh, headed in that direction. Um, we have now landed a one-ton vehicle the size of a, of a small car on the surface of another planet. So it's an order of magnitude, a factor of 10, uh, basically larger than anything that we've ever put on the surface of Mars. It is the precursor for putting something large enough to put a man on the surface of Mars. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that we could put a man on Mars. We just need to have uh, the government stand up behind us and say, yeah, that's what we want to do. Uh, but I think that's the, in my mind, that's the next logical step after this mission uh, is completed. Okay, Richard Rainin, again, congratulations for today's successful landing, and we are really excited to hear more about this mission. Thanks very much for joining us from Pasadena, California.